Good afternoon to all. It gives me immense pleasure to extend you a very warm welcome on behalf of Fatima Mada National College Autonomous, who has clapped all of us for the international webinar on health is happiness. As we all know, there is no happiness without good health. So it is very important to have a good physical and mental health for everyone. So before starting our program, let us invoke the blessings of Almighty through a silent prayer. Thank you. Now, I invite Dr. Saju S., Head of the Physical Education Department of Fatima Mada National College, Kolam, to welcome you all. Good afternoon to all. Two days back, we celebrated the International Day of Happiness. The Lai Lama once said that happiness, the Lai Lama once said that happiness is the highest form of health. With this in mind, the IQC of FMN College column in association with the Department of Physical Education, SN College, Kollam, NSS College, Theramankara, Thiruvanthavaram, and FMR College, is organizing an international webinar on Health is Happiness. Today, we have with us Dr. Bhavana Kurana, an internationally reputed health and fitness coach and founder of I Am Fit Organization, Singapore. Dr. Bhavana is a former student of my alma mater, LNIP Gaulier. On behalf of the organizing secretary, on behalf of the organizing committee, and my personal behalf, I extend a warm welcome to Dr. Bhavana. Hearty welcome to our beloved manager, Reverend Dr. Abhilash Krigari. I also welcome the principals of three organizing colleges, Dr. Jojo PJ. Dr. Nishatarail and Dr. S. Deviga to this webinar. I am happy to welcome all the participants and other organizing committee members to this webinar. Wishing you all good health and happiness in your life. Thank you. Thank you one and all. Thank you very much, sir. Now we would like to invite our manager, Reverend Dr. Abhilash Grigori for a benedictory address. Good evening to all. I am happy to know that the IQAC of Fatima Mother National College, along with the Department of Physical Education of Fatima Mother National College, SN College, and NSS College, is conducting a webinar on fitness titled health is happiness in fact we are living in a period in an age where we pay for health as well as we pay for happiness naturally health and happiness are gifts which we are to achieve freely. Unfortunately, today we are forced 
to pay for both. This is true to the core. And we have a lot of hospitals emerging everywhere in our cities. And we have so many fitness centers emerging in our cities. Therefore, we can say that there is a correlation between health and happiness. There is a famous quote. We all know that when wealth is lost, nothing is lost. When health is lost, something is lost. And when character is lost, everything is lost. I think if we have a good body, we will naturally, we can maintain a good mind as well. Today's webinar, I hope, is something related to health as well as happiness. Because we are fortunate to have our source person in the person, Dr. Bhavana Kurana. And I just visited in the website. She's the founder of I Am Fit. If we are having a healthy body, we can have happiness provided we are able to have a good character. So having a good character, having a good health, etc., are important for having happiness. But in fact, in ideal way, we can say even without health, one can be happy. But with health, we can be more happier. It's easy to be happier having a fitter, healthier body. And this, this webinar, I hope, may help us to understand more our health to live a way of a, to live a healthy way so as to become a healthy person and a happier person may god bless you all thank you thank you father now i invite professor dr jojo pj principal of fatima mother national college kollam for felicitation Good afternoon, everyone. The honorable guest of the day, Dr. Mangana Gurana, Dr. Abhilash Kirikari, manager of Fatima Mother National College, respected principals of uh, SN College for Women Kollam and NSS College Naraman Kara. Dr. Saju, IQSC members, and all the participants who are present here for the webinar. In fact, as our manager highlighted, happiness and health have been anecdotally linked for quite a while. In fact, uh, the countries are trying to escalate their GDP, gross domestic, domestic pro, uh, products, and thereby achieving the heights economically. Whereas there are certain small countries which are more concerned about the health of their citizens. For example, Bhutan country very near to our, our India, our, our country, they have aimed at achieving not higher GDP, but higher GNH index, Gross National Happiness Index. And as a result of it, you all may be knowing that Bhutan is a country, the first country to achieve carbon negativities. There are, of course, several countries having higher happiness in like England and all. But 
when you think of uh, the healthier personalities, healthier citizens, yes. we need to we need to concentrate on the happiness of the citizens. One thing is clear that without good health, we cannot have happiness. There is a cliche, laughter is the best medicine. In a way, you can say that the happiness, without happiness, we cannot uh, laugh actually. So happiness, health, and the wealth of a country are highly related. Anyway, the IQAC, the three departments of physical education of three colleges have come together to get probably the best personality to talk on the topic, Dr. Gurana and Dr. Bhavana Gurana. And I wish all the success for this webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Next, I would like to invite Dr. Nisha J, Principal of SN College for Women, Kollam, for the felicity. Sorry for the inconvenience cost. Now I may invite Dr. S. Devika, Principal of HSM SBB NSS College for Women, for the felicitation. Good afternoon, everybody. We are happy to associate with FMN College in the context of this international uh, webinar on health is happiness. In the COVID times, all of us have become aware of the fact that what is most precious or what is you know, real wealth is health. In the COVID times, again, we realized the importance of health and uh, also uh, how health, you know, ultimately makes up for the quality of life. Uh, it, um, you know, contributes to happiness and so on. And today's uh, webinar, I'm sure, will reinforce the very same idea. Um, I wish this program all success. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Dr. Bhavana is a globally trained holistic health coach and fitness expert with over 20 years of experience. She is a certified health coach from the UK, a certified lifestyle medicine professional from the Switzerland, certified sports nutrition from the USA, and a doctorate in physical education from India. She's a former athlete and a black belt in judo. Advocating for a one-of-a-kind practical approach to embracing a healthy lifestyle, she can guide everyone on their healthy journey according to one's interest, ranging from simple habits to complex behavioral modification. She has a sub substantial experience working with healthy and diseased people and helps them improve from their current state. Her expertise lies in health, fitness, and wellness coaching. So I would like to invite Dr. Bhavana Kurana for a talk on the topic, Health is Happiness. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me over. Thank you, principals. Thank you, Saji sir, and all the attendees who are here today and spending time with me. I hope to provide value in the time you're spending here with me. Um, so our topic today is health is happiness. Um, I would request the organizer to please allow me to share my screen. Uh, could you please let me uh, share my screen? Yeah, thank you so much. Right. Today, our topic, our 
topic is health is happiness and we we clearly understand that there's so many nice quotes and examples given by the honorable principles health is happiness it is the basis of how we survive what we choose to do we are healthy then we are happy even if we are we can be healthy and we can be unhappy also we can be happy and unhealthy also it depends on which scenario we choose to live in so today i'm going to tell more about how we can achieve total health so we are happy inside out right our agenda today is about what is health what choices we make in our daily routine the lifestyle we choose and how our body works technically gain health and gain happiness uh my introduction has already been given so i won't spend time over here now i would like to ask all of you what is health to you in your own words if you could please write it down in the comment box i would like to know what do you think according to you health means to you i would wait for the responses why do one need why does one need health we all know the importance of health but it is it makes different sense to different people so what according to you is health to do daily activities without fatigue yes complete well being of mental social physical and psychological status yes physical and mental well being absolutely perfect that's correct that's what health is to be at your 100% to have to be immune and yes we all understand the importance of immunity in these times corona virus has taken a toll of all of us health immunity mental health and happiness so yeah that's right according to who health is a state of physical mental and social well being not just the absence of disease or infirmity but this definition uh, who had given in 1948 that health is a dynamic state right so they had they they were feeling that there is something absent it keep the mindset the behavior the norms keeps changing so they revised it and then they revised it to the to in 1986 they have revised it to a resource for everyday life not the objective of living you know it's it's not just about living it's not just about breathing it is a positive concept that emphasizes on social and personal resources as well as physical capacities this is still not complete <laughs> then they revised it again because now in 2009 they came with a more wholesome approach to define health that health as the ability of a body to adapt to new threats and infirmities which we can very well relate to in today's time the new threats are coming every single day be it psychological physical biological we have to be ready and prepared to handle and stay strong in our body mind socially mentally and physically to tackle these issues so health according to me to me health is about being efficient whatever i am doing whichever activity i am involved into to me health is about being efficient and spontaneous without any restriction it's freedom yeah 
Uh, what is our regular lifestyle? What do we do? These days, we all understand that we, one thing which we lack is time. That's the most, most scarce thing we have these days. We have no time. It's such a fast paced life. We have poor eating habits. We have no time to cook or elaborate it. Okay, we eat whatever we get. We have lack of movement and activity because it, everything we do is mostly sitting. Even right now, we all are sitting and attending this webinar. A stressful environment. We all are starting from kids in school. Student life is also so stressful these days. There is so much pressure about, for example, posting on social media also stressful these days, even if that gives happiness later on. But, but we all stay in a very, very stressful environment, be it our office or home. There are targets or there are issues which we have to deal with. And we all have lack of sleep. How many hours of sleep you think you get per night? I would like to know that you can please mention that in the comment box. How many hours? We all know seven to nine is the, is, is the acceptable duration to sleep, but do we get that kind of sleep? And even if we are sleeping, are we actually getting the quality of sleep that actually helps our body to repair, recover and rejuvenate? That's a big question mark because sleep is the biggest problem these days. And lack of balance, yes, that's also another big problem. The, our lives are totally, totally imbalanced between work, home, society, friends, children, relation, anything you take, we need to seek balance. So let's take some time to think. And I would really, again, like your comments to, you know, help me understand more. We are talking about health is happiness. So what do you think? What are some lifestyle factors that are costing you your health? You know, what are some lifestyle habits or changes you would want to make to improve your health? Or what are the habits that you would want to get rid of? We must think, identify, and once we know, we can work on those. Please keep writing your, your thoughts in the comment box and I would get back to it once we are done with the presentation. So what are the components of lifestyle? We all know it. It's nutrition which is the, the food we eat, exercise, we all have to move, sleep, super important, manage stress and our attitude, our mindset. It is so important that whatever life is giving us, are we taking it in a manner which is not disturbing the internal equilibrium of our body? or if it is actually disturbing us and causing other hormonal issues, disbalancing and irritating the normal optimal flow of the organ system, which is supposed to work in harmony with each other, right? So these are the factors which we all know, but how we are dealing with these, how are we treating our life, our daily routine? Is it positive or is it negative? Is what we have to think. Yes, this is scary because impact of unhealthy lifestyle is, is, is totally taking the toll on our health. According to WHO, 60% of related factors to individual health and quality of life are correlated to lifestyle. These are all lifestyle diseases, what we do, high blood pressure, all the metabolic disorders, PCODs, PCOS, pre-diabetes, diabetes, everything, if all these diseases and illnesses are the reason of how we are conducting ourselves on a daily basis. You know, problems like 
even the joint problems, skeletal problems, overweight, violence are also because caused by healthy, unhealthy lifestyle. And we are living it every single day without paying much attention to it. And health starts with you because you need to choose what kind of health span you want within, within the lifespan you have. Your choices can decide if you have a longer lifespan, along with it, a health span. That is bringing the quality of life much above, you know, than just lying down on the bed, normal aging, accepting the diseases and disabilities and lack of mobility in our life. We can really choose. Again, time to think. What are the habits that you want to get rid of in order to improve your health related to your lifestyle? It's a very nice quote by Lee Hunt saying, the groundwork of all happiness is good health. Think about it. We enjoy everything if we are happy, if we are healthy. Imagine, and we all know it, okay? We have all have gone, gone through it. If we have fever, if you have fever, would you like to do anything? Do you feel like going and enjoying and partying or playing? Would you do that? You will take rest. Would you feel happy in taking that rest? So a simple fever can cause so much of unhappiness because it is disturbing the health, the basic groundwork. So there, there is a physiological need that is health. And this need is, according to Maslow's hierarchy, he says that it is, it is at the bottom of the pyramid. Breathing, food, water, sex, sleep, homeostasis, stasis, and excretion. This is the basic need, basic fundamental requirement based on which and we live. And the instinct to live is actually based on how interested are we in our survival? How hopeful are we to live? But these basic things, if we have to, we must take care. And if we don't, rest of the things, even if we have going above up the pyramid is not going to help much. Coming back, because ultimately, it's the cellular health. Ultimately, what we do is we eat. We have emotions. We perform some activities. Everything is based on how our cells are functioning, our cellular health, because health is energy. A cell is the basic building block of all living things. We know that. Cells make tissues, tissues clubbing together, make organs, organs work in harmony with each other. And that's how we live optimally. And the basic cells health is so important to make that living important, that living healthy. Because you know, the health of body depends on the health of almost 75 trillion cells in our body because they reproduce, they allow nutrient in and waste out to produce the energy, they, they carry out the metabolism and they aid in reproduction. So this is, there is a wonderful theory. I was talking to uh, a spiritual guru. He has shared an amazing theory of energy with me related to cellular health. How we, we can combine the physiological health and spiritual health, the energy level. And it all interprets to the same thing. We know physiologically that the cells replace old cells and replace by new cells. So when the new cells are formed, they carry in their nucleus the same uh, memory of the old cells and then they replicate themselves, right? So they are like identical. Similarly, in energy theory, what I was told, the cell in the nucleus 
carry the memory of the emotion we have at the time of the new cell is being produced. And we are producing new cells every single second, millions of cells. The lifespan of one cell is 45 days. So each cell gets replaced in 45 days. It's a cycle. It's old cells die, new cells are born, and they're replaced by the new cells. And each cell carry the memory of the emotion it was born in. If we are happy, then the new cell is going to be a happy cell. And of course, the healthy cell. And if we are sad, grumpy, angry, troubled, or with any other negative emotion, the cell which is taking birth at that particular time is not going to be happy cell. So we have this opportunity to define and decide our own life, what kind of health we want. We can choose. That's why the choice is yours. We can choose. We can stay happy. Plus, of course, we have other tricks and tips to, to make the cells healthy at a physiological level also for the body to function smooth and optimally. So what do cells need to survive and thrive? That's the more important thing. What does it need to survive and thrive? Oxygen, we all know that because oxygen cells use oxygen to convert glucose into ATP that fuels the body, the adenosine triphosphate. We need oxygen to survive, that's the basic need. We need water to survive, that's another basic need because water is used for digestion, circulation, excretion, and nothing can happen without water. It carries nutrient to all the cells and help maintains body temperature. Another basic thing is nutrients. We need good nutrients to build, nurture, strengthen, and reinforce vital, healthy, strong cells. We have to have the, the ample supply of the nutrients in the body. When their new cells are getting born, they have enough to take what is needed for it to nourish. And of course, the ability to eliminate. Everything you put in your body, whatever you ingest, either to be assimilated, which means be utilized by the body, or eliminated, or be thrown out of the body, because what is waste should not stay. You have to clean. I'm sure you clean the trash can every single day, because you cannot keep what is not needed. Yeah? So ability to eliminate is another amazing thing very, very fundamental thing we need. Let's talk about breathing, oxygen. You know, even, even, even fire needs oxygen to burn. So why is oxygen so important? Yes, we breathe oxygen, but what does it do? Lack of oxygen will result in tiredness, exhaustion, lack of concentration, decrease in memory, and lower resistance. You see people yawning. I'm sure in this lecture also some, some of you must be yawning. That's when you have lack of oxygen. And then body takes a gasp of air in to fulfill the oxygen requirement. Because healthy cells are aerobic cells. We need oxygen to survive. Oxygen has to go to the cellular level. Each cell survives in an oxygenated environment or they die or they turn into something which we do not want. And when oxygen is not enough, the cells become anaerobic. And if we deprive a cell of 35% of its oxygen requirement for 48 hours, it turns cancerous. And yes, please pay attention. Cancer flourish in deoxygenated anaerobic environment. That's how important oxygen is other than breathing. But of course, we can take oxygen in through breathing only. We need to debreathe. We need to take the oxygen in down to the diaphragmic level where it 
can be uh, given to the to the blood and then blood can take the oxygenated blood is gone to and taken to the cellular level so how do we restore oxygen balance we can include alkaline foods alkaline meal in our diet we can increase the amount of plant based foods and reduce the amount of processed food very basic thing but it is very important to understand we all hear it all the time processed food is not good but now we understand why because we have to keep our cells healthy the basic unit of life we must adequately hydrate our body keep it hydrated because that's what the, the, the liquid in our body which is blood is going to transport the oxygen to the cells to do that we must do proper breathing we must use proper breathing technique which is i will have you do it if you are interested please do it sit properly in a comfortable position with your back straight inhale deeply without bringing your chest up your belly should go out that's where our diaphragm lies it's it's a dome shaped organ just under the ribs that's where the gaseous exchange takes place so if we do if we just do the shallow breathing like we usually do just i'm sure many of you must have realized that you were doing a shallow breathing you know deep breathe in do not move your chest place your your palm on your belly the upper stomach upper belly and breathe in let your belly go move up and down and fill the air in there are many techniques to increase the oxygen intake instantly if you have time we might do some practical but for now try re realizing and remembering to breathe deeply for your own sake and yes daily exercise that is a brilliant way to increase the intake the second basic and most important thing is uh, another important thing is water and not just any water the drinking water pure water because it's the world's first and foremost medicine yes water makes up to 60 to 70% of the body weight the brain and heart are composed of 73% water lungs 83% skin 64 muscles and kidneys are 79 and even bones are watery 31% an adequate intake for men is about 13 cups and women about 9 but these are generic figures a very simple basic formula to know your water intake is 1 liter of water every 20 kg of body weight you can do the calculation that's how much you must consume every single day for the optimal hydration and if you are dehydrated your body can tell if you listen to your body you will be fatigued you will have headaches loss of strength dizziness muscle cramping poor sleep and increased heart rate try to check your water intake first before popping the pill and there are certain fruits and vegetables that are rich in water because it's not just about consuming plain water it's not about drinking water because when we cook that also has water the the food we eat also has water content that that is the constitute of how our body uh, the body constitution the water constitution in the body okay so these are the fruits maybe you can take a screenshot for for future use to for the reference that these are the kind of fruits and vegetables that are high in water so you know what another tip the the higher the water content of any fruit or vegetable the lower the calories higher vitamins and minerals so very good lots of roughage lots of fiber very good. i'm sorry i hear it so yeah so very good for maintaining weight yes food and nutrition we eat 3 to 4 times a day so what we 
output, what you find at the end of your fork is more powerful than anything you find at the bottom of a pill bottle. So what you put in your body is your choice that defines the health of your cell, your physical and mental body. So it is very important that you choose the right food, nutrient dense food for a healthy long life. Now, what do we need? We need these, everybody knows, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, minerals, vitamins, and phytochemicals and enzymes. Very, very important. But when I, I'll just quickly share, I know we are short on time. So carbohydrates, we know carbohydrates are important. People say there are keto diets, there are Atkins diet, there is paleo. Carbs is not, carbohydrates are not our enemy. But the source of carbohydrate has to be complex, not simple, not coming from French fries, burgers, and pizzas, not coming from simple sugars, candies, and sodas. Avoid drinking your, cal avoid drinking your calories. So the source of carbohydrate should be whole grain, vegetables. It should be complex. And protein, very, very important. This is, this is the building block of our muscle. We need protein, adequate amount. And maximum people, especially our, we Indians, we eat a lot of carbohydrate and very little protein and fats more than required. Fats are also not our enemies, but we have to see what are good fats and what are not good fats. Trans fats are a complete no. Uh, certain oils are also not good, but the good fats we are talking about are very, very essential for body functioning, for, for the harmony of organs, interfunction. Minerals, vitamins, phytochemicals, we all know are very important. We do not take them optimally. We hardly, uh, we hardly do it. We hardly uh, fulfill the requirement. And enzymes, good for digestion. We need all of these. Please review your lifestyle. Check, review your meals. And if you think or if you know that you are not having enough three to five servings of fruits and vegetables, please check with your doctor and take supplements. It is in the long term, it is very, very important that your body is meeting the daily nutrition requirement, not the caloric requirement for better health. Yes, we talked about it. Now, because ability to eliminate, ingestion. Ingest is when we eat, assimilate is when it gets digested and get mixed in the blood, the nutrition and the waste that has to be eliminated by the body. This is another major problem because not, not all of us clear our bowel at least once a day. That's the minimum. The typical transit time of food through your body is less than 24 hours. So clearing the bowel within once within 24 hours, it of, is of utmost important. Otherwise, what happens? Because if we do not clear the waste, it is staying, it is getting accumulated. And it's coating the lining of the intestines. Intestines is where we actually absorb the nutrients. The maximum nutrition, nutrients gets absorbed at the small intestine level. And if that is coated, it's not allowing the new good food to, to inside the body. No matter how good, expensive, organic food you eat, your body is not taking it. And if sometimes once in like two days, three days, when you pass the stool, you are passing the expensive stool out. It's not getting mixed in the body, in the blood, not giving you the benefit. And why? Because the processed food that lacks enzymes and fibers and are loaded with refined sugar, slows down, the digestion, the system slows down to 70 hours. You know, this is scary because scary. the average person has two to nine kilograms of accumulated waste in the colon. 
and if it is not cleared cologne becomes toxic and can contain up to 18 kg of waste and 80% of all diseases and discomfort is due to infected fecal matter in a toxic cologne even you know we are talking about health is happiness happiness hormones the serotonin 86% it is the gut that's where they get produced and if our gut is not healthy if it is toxic if we have leaky gut if it is filled with so much of waste of course we feel sad of and then slowly slowly it starts to show the physical symptoms we get headaches we get uh, reflexes we have we get um, we don't we don't feel good we feel sluggish there is no energy right so elimination is very very important and if this continues to happen and we continue to do the same things which we are doing expecting a different result is never going to happen poor diet lack of exercise stress drugs lifestyle and other factors drugs is are not in terms of drugs just they could be medicines also if these are not corrected then the colon loses its ability to eliminate waste materials properly going forward because body is intelligent it adapts to what we what we give and what we don't give use it or lose it and all the organs are muscles so which do you choose you have to ask this question to yourself you choose to stay healthy or you are happy with your current lifestyle it may not be 100% wrong it may not be 100% right but you can choose which area you have to work on because you have to start today it's a journey you have to start start walking on a journey to health by changing small small things small small habits in your daily routine i choose to be healthy and i choose to be happy i would like all of you to affirm and take some steps in your own daily routine daily life and see what is that one small thing you can change that will give you better health tomorrow so new beginning 100% health this is not the end because it's giving you an opportunity to realize to analyze and to come up with something that you think you have to change because if not now then when only you can change it i i hope i have uh, finished well in time and i am open for questions if you may have uh ultimately i also would like i would like to know what one thing what one message you have received from this talk today what do you think you would like to work on in your lifestyle to improve if you can please mention that in the comment and we can discuss you know be it diet be it exercise because we always say i'm going to exercise i'm going to start from tomorrow and that tomorrow never comes so what is that you think you want to change it would be sleep it would be consuming more water it would be improving your diet maybe changing your uh, just your breakfast could be anything please write down in the comment box and if you have any questions please
I will maintain my sleep hours. Perfect. Getting more physically active and have a quality sleep. Yes. You know, people put, people put alarm to wake up. Actually, if you put alarm to go to bed, then you'll wake up without alarm and you will have a nice quality sleep with ample hours needed for your body. Concentrating on self-care and mental health. Yes, very, very important. Good food for good mood. Nice. I will check on my weight and have had have proper exercise. Yes. Can always help conscious life will happen. Happiness depends on multiple factors. So today we are focusing on health as a form of happiness. Because even if you are having a party, there is a wedding in your house. If you are healthy, you can enjoy it, you know, totally. So health as the basis of happiness, the basis fundamental to live a fulfilling life. So Health, we all know is important. How much value you give to your own health matters. And then, of course, you make your choices. You make your lifestyle, your routine, your habits in a manner. That is giving you the benefit of whatever good you're doing to take care of your own health. Right? Maintain family, family and friends relationship. Yes, perfect. That's awesome. The social health is also very, very important. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. Taking a positive attitude to every situation. Yes, you have to give birth. Your, your cells should be happy when they are replacing the old ones. Stay healthy, stay happy. Any questions? Um, okay. Is five hours of quality sleep better than seven hours of disturbed sleep? Absolutely. But five hours is slightly on the lower side. Uh, try and get at least seven hours. And this you have to see how. Yeah, you have to get the time for your sleep because sleep is not time based. Sleep is essential. You check your energy in the morning. It works on. It's it's going to be very lengthy. Otherwise, I'll just tell. In short, I'm sure everybody knows. But we do not give value to the sleep. Your, our memory, our focus, whatever we have to do the next day waking. If you don't sleep well, you are doing it half efficiently. If you sleep well, the efficiency is many folds, right? Waking up early is nice, provided you sleep in time. So do a reverse calculation and try and get at least seven hours of sleep minimum. A general idea is eight eight and a half, nine hours. Some people work well with six hours also, but you have to identify what type are you. There are different sleep types or night owl or, yeah, there's a different bear or, you know, there's a different uh, kind of assessment. Maybe you can just do it on Google. Like what type are you? Identify. And then you will know some, it, it, it ranges from six to nine hours. Five slightly less. Um, could you explain the importance of sleep connecting with health? Try not to sleep for a day and you will know. <laughs> no, but honestly, because why sleep is so important? What we do the whole day. Uh, take example of a car. We ride, we, we drive a car. The whole day we drive. We have to stop 
for maintenance. We have to stop the engine for some time because if, if it is overheating or we have to stop for fuel or we have to check the, the, the pressure in the tire, right? We, we stop our car, right, for some time. When we are using a machine also, we allow it to rest. When you, you give your car for servicing, do you still drive it? You have to shut it down for some time. When we renovate a building, we have to shut down living in the building for some time and then let the work happen. So when we sleep the whole day, whatever wear and tear that happens because we're using our body, we're using our mind, our organs, our senses, we are seeing, talking, analyzing, everything breaks down internally. And when we sleep, that is the time there are cycles of sleep, there, there are phases of sleep where the, the, the body is working on repairing the mind, the repairing the physical body and making it up and ready for the next day. It needs seven to nine hours. Less or less quality, both won't work. The repair work won't happen. And we cannot do a sleep debt. This is this doesn't work that, okay, five days I'm sleeping for five hours and weekends I'll sleep for eight, nine, 10, 12 hours. Doesn't work like that. Body doesn't work like that. We have a clock. Even if we do that, it's not we say, right, I'm just, I couldn't sleep for five days. That's why I'm just trying to fulfill on that. I'm catching up on my sleep. Doesn't work like that. And if that doesn't happen for a longer period of time, you start seeing symptoms. You might not relate it initially, but that's where the diseases set in. And slowly, slowly they appear. You may see, you may get the problem, the, the illness because of lack of sleep 10 years down the line. Then you'll realize it could be because of that. So sleep is very, very important for better health, for good health. So good food, proper hydration, correct breathing techniques, and rest. Super important. Yes. I hope I answered your question. How to deal with an injury? Uh, you have to see a, a physiotherapist or a doctor, but of course, proper rest, proper nutrition that aids in injury rehabilitation and recovery, and breathe. Deep breathe. And for the degree of injury, you have to see a doctor to fix it. Thank you so much. If no more questions, maybe we can just. Uh, Thank you, ma'am, for your value. Thank you, ma'am, for your valuable words. For more inquiries, you can contact madam through the mail ID provided. Participants, participants can provide feedback on this webinar using the URL provided on the chat box for generating your participation certificates. Now, I may invite Dr. Girish Govalakrishnan, Head of Department of Physical Education, SN College for Women Column, for the vote of thanks. Good evening to all, respected resource person and uh, all the knowledge aspirants who have responded so graciously to our webinar. It's my honor to propose a vote of thanks to one and all present here. We feel really happy for being able to organize such a session. And for that, my gratitude falls primarily on our resource person who had accepted our invitation. Thank you so much, Dr. Bhavana Gurana, for gracing us with your presence and also for the brilliant session. Thank you, ma'am. Next, I would like to thank the Reverend Dr. Abhilash Grigari, Manager, Fatima Mada National mm -hmm. College, Kolla, uh, delivered mandatory address for this section. And next, I would like to 
thank Professor Dr. Jojo PJ, Principal at Femency Kollam, and Dr. S. Deviga, Principal NSS College, Niramankara, uh, for they were their uh, felicitation for this session. And next, I would like to thank Dr. Saju Hiss, Head of the Department, FMNC Kollam, Dr. Gida Hiss, Head of the Department, NSS College, Toronto. I also thank our technical wing. And last, I thank the dynamic participants for your keen participation. I really hope that the section was fruitful to you all. Thank you all once again. Thank you, sir. Now it's time to conclude our program. I may extend heartfelt thanks for all who have joined with us to make this program a grand success. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Bhavana. Thank you, Saju, sir. It was a great session, ma'am. Thank you so much. I hope you can implement some things, some, some of the tips in your life.